soaring towards the sky and then plunging straight back down at breakneck speeds? With your heart racing and your adrenaline pumping? If so, grab a front row seat on some of the most hair-raising, scream-inducing rides in the world. And get a rare glimpse behind the scenes of the people who bring these technical marvels to life and the thrill-seekers who live to ride them. Go to the front of the line, buckle up, and hold on tight as Experience 3D rolls down the tracks into a world of pure excitement. Amusement parks in the US host more than 300 million visitors a year. They come from all over, from families on holiday to enthusiasts who have made this their life's passion. They're all here for the same reason, to test their limits and to enter a world of giddy anticipation, excitement and joy. Roller coasters first appeared in the United States in the 1850s after a coal mine in Pennsylvania started charging five cents for rides on their mining track. From these humble beginnings, amusement parks now employ 500,000 people in the US and bring in billions of dollars each year. Modern amusement parks have a variety of rides, so there's something for everyone. The Busch Gardens theme park in Tampa Bay, Florida is home to some of the biggest, fastest and most mind-blowing roller coasters in the world. Mark Rose is the lucky employee whose job it is to design and engineer these ultimate thrill machines. I've been here designing uh, these types of rides for 29 years. So this is the dream job for any engineer because you get to design such unbelievable attractions and you're judged on screams, laughs, smiles. I mean, what, what better job than that? Roller coaster clubs, like the American Roller Coaster Enthusiasts, or ACE, judge these roller coasters on more than just laughs. An ACE member is a very discerning member. They've ridden hundreds of coasters throughout the United States. It means we love roller coasters. It means that we go out of our way to find the best and the fastest and the scariest coasters and we ride them over and over again. Yep, I'm an ACE member. I've been riding roller coasters for 40 years plus. ACE members also call themselves ACEs. I'm officially an ACER. Oh, hands are up all the time, big old grin on your face, and just smiling and screaming your brains out. That's what I love about roller coasters, the thrill, the experience each time. It's in a different ride, you always feel the same happiness and the rush of adrenaline that's going to your head is great. ACEs love all sorts of things about roller coasters, which keep them coming back again and again. It's almost a euphoric feeling coming off of a coaster sometimes. Sometimes I'm really in intensified by it and I just can't wait to go again. Other times I'm so relaxed. It's just the speed, the weightlessness. It just gives you a sense of adrenaline that you don't get from anything else. I really like different coasters because there's a lot of roller coasters where they're like, you know, eight or nine cars long and you're stuffed into a little box with the shoulders down. And, you know, any ride that has a, a, is different than just your standard roller coaster. I really enjoy those. The Shikra roller coaster definitely falls into that different category and is a favorite among aces. Shikra is named after an African hawk, which dives straight down for its prey. And this roller coaster has a first drop that is legendary. Our first drawing of Shikra is in 1996, and it was actually what would it feel like to be in a barrel and go over Niagara Falls? What would it feel like to drop 163 feet and hit in the water? And as we noodled on that idea, we thought 163 feet didn't sound scary, so we brought it up to 200 feet. Originally built in 2005 with a more traditional ride train, Shikra's floors were removed two years later creating an unobstructed view of the ground below. On Shikra, there was a, a couple of things that are different than traditional coasters. 
Kumba Mont, you have about a 26 degree slope on our, our lift hill. Because this was so tall, we went to 45 degrees. So right off the bat, when you're going up Shikra, you're sitting in the back of your seat and you're looking at the sky. So right at the beginning, you feel this is a different kind of coaster. Going 200 feet up this 45 degree chain linked hill is not for the faint hearted. That incline is just, it's incredibly steep and you're, you're looking up at the sky as you're going up and you're wondering, what have I got myself into here? You're going up the steep lift hill and you're like, oh wow, it's getting pretty high up here. top of it it's just it's so quiet it's almost serene and silent as you're up there in the uh, in, in the cosmos almost you're getting a beautiful view of, uh, of downtown Tampa you're getting a look at the entire area actually looking at the entire park you go off the lift and you just keep getting higher and higher and by the time you get up there you can see the ocean and pretty much <laughs> home from here that view from the top also gives riders a tantalizing taste of what's about to come a 90 degree vertical drop, which was the first of its kind on any roller coaster and is quite a difficult feat of engineering. Then we thought, well, what if we got over to the edge and we held you for four seconds before we finally dropped you? We thought that would be exciting. You creep over to the edge and you hang. You don't know for how long. You could be hanging for seconds. It could be minutes. You don't know. You're just hanging over the edge waiting. Hang you over the edge, you look down, 90 degree drop, and it's a thrill. This terrifying nosedive was made possible by the spring-loaded wheels custom designed by the park's engineers. They had to ensure that the train stayed fixed to the tracks during the descent. The best part is when you get to the top of the lift and you're hanging over the edge and you just stop. And you're looking straight down and you know at any moment you're just going to go flying down the coaster face first. and it releases and you just drop. And it's this incredible rush and you just fall down to the, down to the earth again, floating off your seat, you're crashing right back down again and then right back up in the air. It's just, it's, it's fast, it's intense, but it's just, it's so much fun. When we take you to that edge and we lower you over the edge and hold you for four seconds, we find that that's our moment where people start to negotiate with themselves. Should I have gotten on this coaster? Could I get off this coaster? You know, they start at four seconds to reflect their whole life because they know it's coming, they know it's coming, and then they're dropped. 200 feet, 90 degrees, straight down. Hey, you fall straight down and you're almost weightless. You're, you're just weightless as you're floating back down there and you hit the bottom, you catch some intense Gs and you go right back up again. So we found a maneuver called an Immelman which is a stump plane maneuver invented by a German pilot named Nimmelmann, where you would fly upside down and it would be like an inversion instead of going all the way around. When Immelmann got to the top, he reversed his wings and came out. We'll hold you for four seconds, drop straight down for 200 feet, go into an Immelmann and inversion. And here, because the force was so, were so large, everything got larger. The, the elements got larger, the uh, curves got larger. So when we were finished, it was almost like hang gliding. You felt like you were just gliding through the space. It's a really smooth ride for like a giant coaster. You feel like you're swooping a lot and you know gliding, and it's actually remarkably smooth and gentle. We said, let's go a second drop, and this time into a tunnel that goes to darkness. You think it's over, but no, there's another drop. You've got to do it again. The second drop is an 81 degree free fall into the dark. So you're back looking up at the sky, you're twisting around, coming back down around again, around at a turn. But always at the end, we hit water. So you hit the water and actually 20% of all the braking occurs at the water. It slows the train down. So we had the, the elements of going over Niagara Falls and some of those still are in, in the ride today. You can just feel the spray all over yourself and see it going by, going by everybody else. It's a 
nice rooster tail behind you. It's very visual, so people that do not ride Secrets will still get that feeling of that's exciting, that was a lot of energy, that was fun. Going 70 miles per hour through massive drops, loops and swoops that would make a stunt pilot jealous is the type of high-tech engineering feat expected from a modern thrill ride. Once you get off the ride, you're like, geez, I gotta do that again. That's a great to like this without getting bored. I've been on Sheikra probably around 60 to 70 times now. I've been on the ride over 200 times now. Each time, same experience, same thrill. I scream like a little girl. As the experts say, it's just as much fun the hundredth time as it was the first. So, it's time for one more ride on Sheikra. Take a front row seat, down with that shoulder harness, and hold on tight. Four, three, two, one. The ride experience at Bush Gardens continues with a visit to another big steel roller coaster that's a favorite among thrill ride connoisseurs, Kumba, which was built in 1993. Kumba, just one word describes it, intensity. It's absolutely relentless from the start to the finish. It's really a great ride. The first hill really gives you uh, a good view of the park uh, like the other rides do. Once you get up to the top of that hill and you're going down, the g-forces that it exerts on you, it's just, it's non-stop. There's, I don't feel the calm before the storm on that one. There's no real calm and it just doesn't let you go for the entire ride. Sit. Get ready for the best 3D movies every Friday, Saturday and Sunday. This is it. Do it. This month on Sky 3D. Any more questions? From mayhem to making it work. Let's fly. May's the month for major 3D premieres. Fire! Fire! Blue must come to Rio de Janeiro. He doesn't even fly. Feathers fly and affections are found in family comedy Rio. Oh, hello, pretty bird. Okay, I want to go home now. No, no! Jack Black's back and kicking up a storm in Kung Fu Panda 2. At last we meet. Ah! And mechanical monsters take over the world again in the biggest Transformers yet, Dark of the Moon. I'm coming for you! It's total anarchy around here. Just a small selection of great 3D movies every Friday, Saturday and Sunday with Sky Movies this month on Sky 3D. seven inversions and at the time had the largest vertical loop in the world at 110 feet. With Kumba we wanted a long fast coaster and we wanted it to be interactive with the guests so we designed it so that the main plaza the coaster is all around you it goes over you goes to you and back it was down close to the train tracks, so it was close to the train tracks. It went over a bridge that, that fed the Congo River Rapids, a boat ride. So if you're standing in that line, the coaster went under you, over you, and back under you again. So we try to make it very interactive. Kumba rockets by the people in line, building excitement and anticipation, even for those who know what's coming. You go upside down seven times, you're going 60 miles an hour, and it's flip after flip. It's relentless, it never lets up. There's not a pause on the ride, so it's always keeping you really involved and really excited. Steel construction has taken roller coaster engineering, speed, and size to a whole new level, which was simply impossible in the early days when roller coasters were made of wood. The 1920s were the golden era of wooden roller coaster design, 
when iconic classics such as the Cyclone were built. But even in our modern era of steel, wooden roller coasters continue to excite riders. Wazia is a wooden roller coaster that was built in 1999. It has a shorter train. These other trains seat as many as 32 people, and a wooden coaster only seats 24. So we were worried that we wouldn't have quite the ride capacity. So we actually built two quasis. We built two trains and tracks that are intertwined in the same footprint. So two trains can dispatch, cross each other right out of the gate, go up two separate lift hills, drop at 50 miles an hour, and almost look like they're going to run into each other. But at the last minute, they both peel away, but they're going 50 miles an hour, so that closing speed is 100 miles an hour. And they cross each other five more times, including a bunny hop hill where you will feel weightless going over there. Wazi being a wooden roller coaster, it has its own unique feel and sound because it's wood and because the whole thing is kind of breathing as you go around it and the wood is kind of giving, it has that traditional wood coaster feel. On wooden roller coasters, the structures and track are designed to move with the force of the passing train. If they were too rigid, the wood might break. So the movement acts like a shock absorber and it also creates a noisier, shakier ride which only adds to the feeling of danger. It just gives you that shaky feeling like it is an old time wooden coaster, so. I usually laugh the whole way through. It just, once I start, I can't stop myself. Kids also want in on the action. So there are special roller coasters designed for smaller riders. So if you're just a small child, you can ride, and when you look over your shoulder, you can see Sheikra. So I've already heard three-year-olds come off and say, I think I'm ready for Sheikra. So they're not tall enough, we'll be here when they're tall enough, and we can't wait till they grow up and ride Sheikra. The taller coasters have a 54-inch height requirement, and that is just so that they can sit comfortably in our seats. Our shoulder harnesses will, will hold them comfortably and safely. The smaller coasters are smaller in hill height, so they don't, don't fall as far. Uh, they don't quite have the G-force, and they also accommodate a smaller person in the seat. The Thrill Rides Tour continues with a trip to Phoenix, Arizona, to visit a smaller amusement park called Castles and Coasters. Roller coasters always feel dangerous. That's what makes them so thrilling. But the key to making sure those fears do not become a reality is proper maintenance. That's where guys like Jonathan Fugel and Joe McNulty come in. They work behind the scenes every day to keep the rides safe. I've ridden this, oh, I've lost count how many times I've ridden it. <laughs> well, what we have is a train that runs 2,140 feet, uh, about 50 miles an hour. We have a motor down below, and it's picking up the chain, it's driving them. Now, up at the top, it's going to release the car, and as it goes over the top, it, it's free fall from that point on. Riders assume that this thrilling free fall is all under control, but that's not always the case. All kinds of things can go wrong on machines this complicated. If it's too cold of a day, the train won't come back. The train will go out and uh, it'll drop over that hill. And then if the bearing grease is too thick or if the temperature is too low, it can get stuck in one of these loops and just sit there. See, that's about all the good news and bad news I got about it. Getting stuck in one of these loops is probably not the kind of thrill that most riders are looking for. But when temperatures drop below 60 degrees, that's exactly the kind of thing that can happen. This is the only double looping roller coaster in Arizona. I'd say we're about 95 to 100 feet high. When you're going 100 feet up in the air at 50 miles an hour, you also need to know that the track is in good shape. The track is constantly in motion and it's steel, so we expect it to break, that's okay. It's all part of the way it was set up and designed. It's something you would expect like any other thing on your car. You wear out tires, we wear out parts, that's what we do. 
We have two guys, they climb the track with harnesses. They, they climb every foot of this track on a constant basis. And then we have one guy who's qualified for welding. Ernie does all of our welding for us. So you'll forever see Ernie up at 90 feet up in the air, 110 feet up in the air. He's the guy who comes out here and puts it all back together again. So what we do basically is we go out and we walk the track and we find cracks, and then we come back and weld it all back together again. Luckily for all the riders who don't want to get stuck, Ernie Rickert is not afraid to go up as high as he needs to without the help of a roller coaster train to get him there. Me and my partner take care of the big roller coaster because, one, we're not scared of heights, and two, we've done it so many times that it's second nature. A lot of the guys don't want to be 80 or 90 feet in the air and climbing around like a monkey on a ladder, so. At least once a month, we put a harness on and walk the entire track. There's two of us that do it. That's every weld, every bolt gets inspected to make sure that they're sound and it's safe to run. But it's really nice to sit up on top of the, the top loop there and look at the city. I, mean, I can see the entire city from up there. We have a Magnaflux gun, which is a large electromagnetic and iron oxide particles to check for cracks, to make sure how big they are, how soon they gotta be done. If it's a critical, they bring a big lift in, I go fix it. This morning's inspection reveals a crack which only needs to repair before the park opens in a few hours. What I'm gonna do is I'll finish cutting this out and then I'll weld it back in. The key to safety is finding and fixing these small problems before they become big ones. Now, as bad as that looked, the next time this shows a crack, this piece of steel will be replaced. We'll put a brand new one of these pieces in to make sure this ride is safe at all times. Aside from the daily routine of checking for and fixing cracks, there are also very detailed yearly inspections that are required to make sure roller coasters stay safe. The train every year gets torn down all the way down to the parts and pieces. We tear it all the way down to every nut, bolt, everything comes off of every car once a year. And then when it's apart, we have somebody come out and do non-destructive testing. They do Doppler sonar and x-ray, and they, they check everything to make sure it's all in one piece. This car, you know what's interesting, I'll tell you about this car. Every axle on this car costs over $70,000. So at that point, I'll give you some idea what it costs to own a roller coaster. This, this car has 14 axles and it has 144 wheels. Every wheel has a wheel clearance down to, some are set at 1 8 of an inch. And the, man's, the men that work with me set those wheel clearances on a daily basis. And the bearings are constantly wearing out, the wheels are constantly wearing down. There, there's a, this thing is like a, a big hole in the ground that you put your money in. But people have a lot of fun riding. And then the other thing to remember with a roller coaster is they don't come apart real easy. When you go to take your roller coaster apart, you have to get out a big sledgehammer and wrenches that are uh, about this big around. So you put two guys on a six foot bar and a big sledgehammer, and that's how you take apart your roller coaster. That's how you put it back together again too. So. Uh... Roller coasters don't always break down at convenient times. Doing ride maintenance with a long line of customers waiting can be a high pressure situation. The roller coaster sensor went out because we have so many computer control items here. Um, we're finding out that electrical lightning storms, power surges really play heck with our electrical systems. We've, uh, it's cooked a couple of computers, so. This roller coaster was done in 15. Just long enough for the people to go have a soda and come back to line. Uh, that's, that's part of the job is to, when the ride goes down, you have to make it operate as fast as you can. All in all, roller coasters and other thrill rides are remarkably safe, with very few accidents to speak of, because of the army of dedicated technicians working every day to keep it that way. So that feeling of danger in almost every case remains just that, a feeling which only adds to the thrill. Sport. 
in amazing 3D, taking you to the heart of the action. Go to sky.com slash 3D for information. There are many different kinds of thrill rides. Some swing upside down. Some are a simple high-speed drop. But they all have the same goal to make people scream. The skydiver at Castles and Coasters is a 120 foot high freefall drop tower. It takes about 60 seconds for, from lift off to drop and exit. The ride is stopped after when the vehicle is released, it is stopped by magnetic braking, which has brakes on each side of the vehicles to slow it down. 